Welcome to this worship from Trinity Lutheran Church in Marshalltown, Iowa. Trinity is a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America with the motto, God's work, our hands. Let us begin with the words that were spoken and the sign that was marked upon us in our baptism when we were declared God's children, brothers, and sisters to each other. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us call to mind the need we all have for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, great physician, mend our brokenness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, living water, refresh our spirits. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, light of the world, shine your love upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. This is the good news. God is mercy. And in the name of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Let us pray. God, you are the great creator of all that exists. You preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us, and by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. 
as we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and in dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, now is the acceptable time, now is the day of salvation, Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Dear friends, I greet you in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Storms can be scary. We've had our share 
in Marshalltown. The tornado of 2018, the derecho of 2020. Following the tornado back in 2018, some of us pastors in town divided up the northeast section of Marshalltown and we kind of functioned as chaplains. And one of the streets that I was chaplain of was most of State Street. And one day I stopped to visit an elderly woman who told me her story about the tornado. And that's primarily what we did mostly. We went to people's houses and let them tell their story because that's an important part of the process of coming to terms with things. And so she told me that she felt like her house was going to explode. And physically, she was not capable of getting down into her basement. And so she took me into her bathroom and she showed me how she got down on her knees and hugged the bottom part of her toilet and just held on. And she said, I just cried, I cried and I prayed, I cried and I prayed, I thought I was going to die. In our gospel, the disciples are in a scary storm. And evidently, it must have been quite the storm because they were seasoned fishermen on the Sea of Galilee and they would have been used to these storms coming up. But this one must have really scared them because they thought they were going to die. They said to Jesus, don't you care? that we are perishing. The good news of the story is that Jesus is present in the midst of the storm. Now, there are many kinds of storms besides tornadoes and derechos and flooding and wildfires. There are other kinds of storms besides those physical storms. There are some storms that are just a part of the human condition. Our health fails. Or a beloved one dies. Our job is eliminated. The sky dries up and the corn just withers and withers. And the farmers just can sit and do nothing but feel anxious and trepidation. There are those kinds of storms that come into our lives, and it's not because we have done anything to cause them or that they are our fault, but there are some storms that are just a part of being human and living in a broken world. There are also some storms that are of our own making. In our weakness, we can give in to temptation or we can make a mistake and then the messiness that follows after those things can feel like a, a storm. Or sometimes our consumptiveness, our desire for more and more, it robs us of contentment in the simple life of having enough. Sometimes grudge-bearing that we know we should let go of, but for some reason we just like hanging on to it. It twists our souls. And then there sometimes is that unwillingness to believe that God truly is merciful and that God truly does forgive each and every one of us. Sometimes those storms are of our own making, and then I believe that there are storms in this world because there is evil in this world. Some of the nastiest storms blow in this world because of hateful hearts, because of distorted faith, and because of the hunger for power. And so many times those things become a justification for violence and hurt directed towards our neighbors. Sometimes there is storms in this world because hearts are evil and they are dark. 
Some storms perhaps come our way because we choose to follow Jesus. In a world that genuflects before power and possessions and position, in a world that stores up treasures on earth that moth, moth and rust consume, in a world where music and movie promote such a materialistic view of sexuality in a world that has succumbed to rudeness and incivility. To follow the way of Jesus in that kind of world can bring some strong winds and high waves into your life. When we choose the way of Jesus over those ways, you can probably look on the horizon to see the clouds gathering. And then there are storms that Jesus brewed up himself. He caused the storm. Jesus caused a lot of rocking of the boat because of his expansive, inclusive, radical commitment that all people are to be welcomed into the embrace of God. So there are many kinds of storms other than physical storms. I find comfort in a verse from one of my favorite hymns. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter in the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Jesus is with us in the storm. He calmed the wind and the wave. He said, peace be still. And he wasn't just saying that to the wind and to the waves. He was speaking those words to the hearts of his disciples. Peace be still within here. And Jesus speaks peace be still to our hearts as well. Peace is not the absence of a storm. It is the presence of Jesus in the midst of the storm. Peace is not the absence of fear. It is the presence of courage rooted in God's promise, when you're weak, I'm going to be strong. Peace is not the absence of sin. Peace is the presence of a grace that saved a wretch like you and me. Peace is not the absence of darkness, it is the presence of a light that pierces the darkness. Peace is not the absence of conflict or disagreement. That cannot be peace or we will never have it. Peace is not the absence of conflict and disagreement. Peace is the presence of civility and of respect. Peace is not the absence, in the words of St. Paul, of hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Peace is the presence of Jesus, the promise that nothing in life or death, nothing today or nothing tomorrow, no, no power in all of creation can separate us from the love of Jesus. Peace is not the absence. Not the absence of strong winds and high waves. Peace is the presence of Jesus in the midst of it. Peace is the hope that St. Paul writes of. God works for good in all things, even in the storm. Amen. When our grandson Jace was much younger, maybe four or so, I was over at their house in Ames doing some child care and a storm came roaring in 
and he came running. He was upstairs. He came running downstairs, and he said, Papa, get in the basement. This is serious. (laughs) We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remember your merciful love, O Lord, for us, and hear us as we pray. Enrich our Trinity community with the gifts of faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our hearts to receive with hospitality all who come to us, especially those who are different from we. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us courage to stand against any kind of hatred, defend the weak, and be a voice for the voiceless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we are tossed about by strong and high winds around us and within us, may you be our peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, our fields, our pastures, our orchards, our gardens are withering. We ask you, Please send to us the gift of refreshing rain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are struggling in body, mind, or spirit. We commend them into your hands. Hold them firmly with your love. Assure them of your presence and give to them the help they need especially for those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, for our good bishops, Elizabeth and Amy. Fill them with your wisdom and keep them in good health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May God order our days and work in peace. Hear our prayer and lead us in the way of Jesus. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self, and you have called us to this feast of grace. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we have received here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. I invite you to stand. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. On the night before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, this is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. Again, Father, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all people so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Remembering your love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We remember before you all of our beloved deceased, those who have gone before us into your kingdom. We rejoice in the gift of eternal life they now enjoy in heaven with you and all the saints who have gone before us. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We pray together as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with all of you. You may be seated. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Jesus present with us in the storm, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, bread of life, you take away the sins of the world. 
Grant us your peace. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. I welcome you. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love others with the love that we have received. Amen. Loving God, bless our families and fill our homes with respect, joy, laughter, and prayer. Especially send your blessing upon Tony and Roberta and their family, Paul and Tanya and their family, Justin and Mandy and their family. Protect them, guide them, and deepen their love for you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and the Lord give us peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.